What's up guys, Dark Sage here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys my Flow and Reset profile. This is a deck that I've been working with for a while. Um, I got second place at my last locals last week, so this is the build I've been running, so we'll get on with it. For the main deck, I am playing three Robina. Robina searches out your other level one Flow and Reset monsters. And basically helps you get your combo started, so that's a good. That's always a three of. And then I am playing three Eaglin, which helps you search out your level seven and higher's, and helps you like get all your late game combos and stuff that you need. And for the other ones, I'm playing one two can and one Stree. It's just what I've seen that. Has been the most successful and what I've used for the most. On to the big monsters. I have two e two Empin. He's the main monster you want to search out and stuff with Eaglin and try to get on the board as quick as possible so you can so you can outpower your opponent late game and early game actually not late game. Then I'm playing one Ryza. I don't necessarily see this card as often, but when I do, it actually does win me games. It's a really good one of. Play a one Mist Valley Apex Avion for the negate. One Storm Winds, it helps me control the game against other decks that I need. And I'm playing one DD Crow. I've never really needed to use more than one. And it's also searchable throughout the deck, so I put it in as one I have the other two on the side you'll see later it's really good at one I didn't necessarily think of adding more into the main deck right now but onto the hand traps I am playing three ash blossom and then three dimensional shifters or three dimensional shifters to help get your combo started and stuff that's the monsters and onto the spells I'm playing three Flowunderies and Advent of Adventure. This lets you banish a winged beast and search out one Flowunderies monster or the or Flowunderies field spell, and then gain 500. So this helps you out during like game threes and stuff, so you can so you can at least like win win in time if you need to, or if you just need to get your combo started. Playing three Fluandries in the Magnificent Map. This helps you start your combos if you need. It lets you banish a level one and then, or lets you reveal level one and then banish one with a different name. So that helps you get, like, if you have Eaglin, helps you get Robina and helps you start combos. And I am playing the one Terraforming to help get it. And then I'm playing Fluandries in the Unexplored Winds. This helps you do some of your. Uh, tribute summons that you need like on the bigger monsters for example like like uh, Apex Avion or Ryza so this lets you use one of your opponent's cards as a tribute or it lets you send one of your opponent's cards as a tribute so that's pretty good and then for draw power I am playing three extravagance I have been told not to play three extravagance and pick up three pot of prosperities but pot of prosperity is pretty expensive right now so I am Playing the three extravagance instead. I'm also playing three pot of duality. Pot of duality just lets you reveal the top three, pick one, and then shuffle the rest back in deck, but you can't special summon in the for the rest of the duel. Or for the rest of the turn. Yeah. Then on to my two of my spells. These are personal choices. I chose to play two Book of Moon, two and two Cyclone. And two Book of Moon helped me stop like uh, Swords hole and stuff. Like, if they summon like a monster, you can flip it face down with Book of Moon and they won't be able to synchro summon or anything. And then, for Cosmic Cyclone, that's my. It's my main deck out to like Mystic Wine and stuff. And other like. Other traps that are. Or other spells and traps that are hard to get around. And for the last two cards, I'm playing one Called by the Grave and one Full on Reason Dreaming Town. Dreaming Town lets you normal summon on your opponent's turn, and then if you tribute summon while it's in the graveyard, you can flip all your opponent's monsters face down, so it's like another Book of Moon. 
So I found that really good. I am going to show the Astro Deck. I never really used it, so it doesn't necessarily matter, but I do play two Link Rebo, one IP Mascarina, one Trivagate the Baron Blossom, one Unicorn, one Desperate Doom Eagle, one Appaloosa, one Axis Code, and one Trivagate Sherry the Amos Omen. Those are my links that I play necessarily. I don't go into any. Honestly, I don't really ever need them. And they're they're just really there for the pot of extravagance, really. Nothing nothing more necessarily. For the rest of it, I am playing a, a tiny Leerless package. I'm playing one in Saw Blue Robin, one in Side of Starling, and one Assemble Nightingale. Nightingale lets you attack directly and get it, it gets you into Zeus pretty easily. Recital Starling lets you search if you need to get something specific or anything. And then Ensemble Robin is just one of those ones that can bounce if needed. And I also play one King Kazuchi Fuko. Or Fucho. He He's just unaffected by card effects so you can make him sit on him and just like let your opponent try to beat over it. I'm going to play Downard and the one Zeus. Zeus is pretty good in the stack if you can get it off, but I never really had to use it. It's just there as, like, if you need to use it. If you're, like, desperate to use it. Now, onto the side deck. I am playing... I Like I said earlier, I'm playing the other two DD Crows on the side, but for the side, I'm playing three Artifact Lancia. It helps me get around, like, other decks that don't really banish all that much and can't necessarily, like... Or, no, this... I'm thinking wrong. This stops banishing. Give me one second. I'm reading. Yeah, neither player can banish cards. So this actually stops a lot of decks. Like, this helps me in the mirror match when I play it against the mirror match. And, like, this helps me out a lot. It's one of the... One of my safer picks in the side deck that I play a lot of. Next I'm playing two Nibiru. Only two because I don't necessarily, at my locals, I don't really have any, any really like need to like Nibiru anyone because no one really sums that many or they play around it. And then I'm also playing two DD Crow, like I said. I'm playing the two in here just in case I do need them later on in later games, but I only ever needed the one. So that's not like, not an issue. I am playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster for back row heavy decks like Eldritch and stuff just in case. Um, I am playing three Dark Ruler No Mores. And it's just another good control card that I need. There that I've seen that has been doing really well. I use it a lot in games two and three most of the time, so this isn't really a bad choice. I am playing Triple Mystic Mine in the Escher deck or the side deck. Only like only if I ever necessarily need to like just set up and stall games two and three and just like sit on Advent of Adventure. Really, this like helps me out get that 500 boost so I can win, win in time if I have to, or if we're going into time. This will help me, help me win games. And then for the last card of my side deck, I am playing one Metaverse. This helps me get the Floundry's Field Spell or Mystic Mine if I do put it in. But I've never necessarily needed it. Anyways, guys, that was my Flow Andres deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it. And until next time, peace.